Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this flight I'm going to go from Rome to Venice in an MB339A, which looks like this. It's a military trainer, Italian obviously, the, the colors somewhat give it away in this case. Um, cute little plane, very nimble, and uh, yeah, uh, it is a freeware version. Uh, the eye point in the cockpit is a little bit far away from the panel by default, so I always have to zoom in. Anyway, in the previous video, uh, we had left the Apollo 12 crew, well, Al Bean and Pete Conrad, on the surface of the moon. They had just landed, and so we're picking up the Apollo 12 audio right now. And with that, let me turn that down because I turned down the engine noise as well. Okay, uh, I think we should be set to go. So, leaving Rome. Oh, maybe I should turn down the engine noise a little bit more. Yankee Clipper, Houston, uh, we'll see. to be holding. Uh, now try medium beam wet, over. There were two textures, one that wasn't aged, and this one was supposed to be the aged texture. So, I don't know. Hopefully it looks properly weathered. Okay. We'll pass by Rome at higher altitude than we did last time. They have a lot of trouble talking to Yankee Clipper, to be honest. Okay, Dick, uh, you're about a minute from LOS. We're satisfied with your search tank pressures. Uh, you will take a little uh, look in a little while at your S band next time you come around the horn. We'll be expecting to see you at 11140. Over. Just a reminder Yankee Clipper is the command and service module with Dick Gordon in it. So he's in orbit around the moon and. Unlike the surface crew, which will be in constant contact with the Earth, uh, he's only in contact with the Earth half the time. So there's the Aramachi MB339, and let me just get its stats quickly. It's got a single Rolls-Royce Viper Mark 632 engine not not the most powerful thing on the planet but functional it's uh it depends on the exact variants it's about 10 kill newtons 8 to 10 kill newtons some variants 12 ish intrepid houston go I think I did something I said I'd never do. I believe I shut that beauty off in the air before it touched down. Shame on you. <laughs> I, I guess he's saying he shut down the descent engine before he actually touched no, down. I was on the gauges. That's the only way I could see where I was going. I saw that blue contact light and I shut that baby down and we zipped it from about six feet. Boy, you can sure see the stars out of this AOT. That's actually. Right now. Look at it. Serious, and I can see uh, the whole constellation. That's actually the way I landed the uh, Apollo 11 mission in that video. Navy landing. It's okay as long as the hook was down and we didn't fold. I'm happy. That's a firm. You didn't get a boulder. <laughs> So maximum speed is Mach 0.82 for this, 485 knots at sea level. Uh, range about a thousand nautical miles. Boulder is an aircraft landing on a 
carrier that misses the arresting wire and has to go around again. I did not know that. So that's an interesting double meaning for boulder. Or uh, did they mean bolter or I don't know. Obviously boulder has a specific meaning on the moon, meaning a really big rock that you might want to avoid. But what they're describing sounds more like a bolt, you know, to bolt, but I don't know. It's also called a boulder. Not too sure about all the carrier landing terminology. So we're going to cut across from Rome to San Marino and then on to Venice, of course. See the, oh, that was the default cockpit viewpoint, but it just went gray on me. Okay. So yeah, not Intrepid the most Houston. convenient. I don't know what the red line on this gauge is supposed to be. I don't think Roger, it's particular to this plane, to be honest. When you get a chance, would you read out, uh, address two, but we know Mach 0.82 is the limit. Four, six, four for us, please. Okay, there's 233. Four six four is plus zero zero five zero zero. Roger, thank you, Al. Of course, there's no point me finally okay. tuning the eye point because every time I go to the external view, it's okay. going to reset. Oh, let's get a parting view of Rome as well. Hey, uh, Houston, uh, Intrepid. Intrepid, Houston, go. Okay, uh, we were marking on Pollock and we uh, entered one wrong number. It did a bird 32. Is there any way to wipe out that set of marks now that we did the bird 32? Stand by, Pete. We'll confer with the experts here. Roger, they're asking for 30 more seconds. Okay, we'll wait. All we want to do is get outside, that's all. <laughs> He's in a rush to do the EVA. Uh, they only... Uh, uh, Trepid, Houston, the uh, simplest thing to do is uh, do the program over. They take about five hours okay. from touchdown to get outside, so pretty quick, all things considered. 
There's a patch to the left on the photo scenery that doesn't look quite right. What's up with that? Obviously some clouds baked into the surface here and there. So yeah, pretty quick turnaround time. Just like Apollo 11, they couldn't wait to get outside. And of course, in this case, they're doing two EVAs on the lunar surface. They'll do one sleep and then do another. This is Apollo Control. Crew of Intrepid are rather quiet at this time. Doing some alignments of the Intrepid's inertial measuring unit. Taking sightings on the stars. Other activities associated with uh, powering down the limb. But we'll leave the circuit up in spite of the lack of conversation to uh, catch any discussions that take place between Intrepid and the ground. Some 29 minutes until Yankee Clipper comes over the hill again. It's Apollo Control standing by on live air ground. city at our left wing tip we'll is circuit up in spite of the lack of conversation to uh, catch any discussions that take place between intrepid and the ground some 29 minutes until Yankee Clipper comes over the hill again it's Apollo control standing by on live air ground that city is turny and I think we're entering the region of Umbria right now. This is Apollo Control. Lunar Module Systems Engineer reported to Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth that uh, at the time of touchdown, some 3.8% of decent propellants were still aboard at shutdown. Still standing by on air ground for resumption of communication between Intrepid and Mission Control. 22 minutes, 23 seconds until acquisition by Yankee Clipper. Yeah, and there you're striking angle. Roger, they look great. I think there might have been some very staticky conversation that was skipped there. And there's your uh, lat long and altitude. Uh -huh. Roger, let us look at that for a second. Looks like Dick did some good tracking with an altitude like that. Roger. This town is Spoleto. Hey Houston, it's even fun at 16G inside this spacecraft. Don't break anything out. Well, we were, we, as soon as we landed, we started handling the books like we do in the simulator. One view, we were throwing them off the table and <laughs> over near the search majors, what are you? Intrepid Houston, recommend you accept 989. Okay, that's done, and we're going to uh, who?
We've basically been uh, sort of cruising along at Mach 0.79, so pretty close to where they said the max Roger, speed for this is. Go. Okay. Gently going down and up in a calm, oscillating manner. Trumpet Houston, uh, would you read us out X address 267? Coming at you. Plus one zero two four zero. Roger, thank you. And Trumpet Houston, uh, we're just chasing a funny in the eggs. Uh, we're convinced it's okay, and we're just trying to figure it all out. Okay, no sweat. Off to the forward left, between us and that lake in the distance, is Perugia. Okay, Houston, there, the sorting angle. Roger, Pete, we copy. Want us to charge? Roger, go ahead. Okay. I think the torquing angles and all is for arm, uh, aiming the antenna, but I'm not 100% sure about that. They shouldn't be torquing anything else at the moment, so... Okay, uh, what do you want to do with that one? Uh, let's look at it for just a minute, Pete. Okay. Intrepid Houston, uh, recommend you reject this now in 89. Your first one was a little better. Okay, reject it is. Intrepid Houston, uh, if you go full and data, we're ready to fire you up some uh, new vectors. Roger, just a second. 047 is plus 37433. And 053 is plus 05250. Roger, stand by. We got him, Al. Okay. Uh, Roger, it looks like you better tweak up your steerable a little bit. Looks like we're beginning to lose a little signal. Okay, what uh, do you recommend is the best possible angle? Stand by, Al. We'll get him. Intrepid Houston, try pitch, plus one three, yaw, minus two six. The yaw would be good, but the pitch isn't even close. Uh, it must be somewhere around one ten. Roger, it's pitch one one three, sorry. That ball. That's where we are now, Houston. Roger. Well, maybe there's just yeah, IMU yeah, alignment yeah, stuff. Roger, Pete. And 
in traffic Houston uh, I've got the octal data for your P22 workaround procedure okay uh, we are ready to copy okay your first one is zero four six four five enter and three five zero seven zero enter Okay, zero four six four five enter and three five zero seven zero enter. That's affirmative feet and I've got a DAP uh, load update for Lem Wait for you. We're approaching San Marino. Okay. Roger, your new Lem Wait is one zero eight zero two. One zero eight zero two, Roger. And uh, Houston, are uh, we stay yet? Uh, affirmative, stay for T three. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, on surface nine and start our stay partial power down. Roger. And do you have a P-22 act time? Roger, Pete, it's on your lunar surface pad. Uh, stand by, I'll read it out to you again. We okay. got it. Houston, we have an update on that P-22 act time for you. I have to say, San Marino is not okay, the most super visible one, thing one, two, place two, four, ever. Three, zero. As far as city-states go. Roger, one, one, two, two, four, three, zero. Affirmative. I'll, I'll tell you when we're entering it and when we're leaving it. And... I'll leave you to judge whether it's easy to tell from any physical landmarks where the heck it is. But I'm just going with the moving map and in another window. Computer's yours. I mean, this doesn't actually show the border. Okay. We are entering San Marino now. And then... There is a city in San Marino called Cerevalle, Cerevalle or Cerevalle. And uh, try and turn towards it. Yankee Clipper, Houston, how do you read? The town in question is right in front of us. We're currently over that town. And we are out of San Marino now. <laughs> I don't know. Roger, Clipper, reading you weak but clear. Certainly not the hardest border ever. Clipper, if you'll give us poo and accept, we'll start your uh, update. Yankee Clipper, Houston. So turning towards Venice now. We'll just follow the coast. Yankee Clipper, Houston. I mean, Roger, Dick. Uh, you in Poo and accept and ready. Honestly, for calling it a city state is a bit of a misnomer. Roger, it's on its way. Now this uh, higher 
Well, there's there's a patch coming up to the right that's obviously. Uh, Houston, I have a Rev 16 map update and a landmark tracking pad. If you're ready to copy. Obviously, been photographed at a different time than the rest of the landscape. That's Roger, the. Map update, Rev 16. LOS is one one two five three four eight one one three. I think that's the town of Sasena. Sasena. And then beyond that is Forley. Uh, at my left wing there. Roger, Dick. Uh, P-22 landmark tracking pad follows. T-1 is 112. Two zero zero zero. T two is one one two two five one one. The landmark is number one nine or three, and it's south zero six. Over. Right. Okay. Uh, I believe the city to our left is Ravenna. Or Ravenna. Probably Ravenna. Trying to get the nicest view here. Intrepid, Houston. Go ahead. Well done, Intrepid. You got a bunch of uh, happy geologists in the back room waiting to go. <laughs> Say, uh, we're standing by with a lead consumables update and also standing by for your description. So, uh, this okay, area. We were just uh, working on that and I'm. Uh, I'm very close to where I want to be, but I'm trying to pin it down exactly. This area up ahead is the delta of the Po River. And we met the Po River basically on the other side of Italy, on the west side of Italy. On the way from Milan to Genoa. And of course that was closer to its source in the Alps. This is finally the delta of it. Uh, 
reason for planning purposes, we landed very close to the head of the snowman. Uh, I'm guessing exactly on the same line as the selected site three, but a little bit further left. And I'll, let me give you some coordinates here. This is my first offhand cut at it. And remember, uh, Surveyor 3 is at the belly button, so landing at the head is okay. The snowman is not very big. We're talking about hundreds of meters. This seems to be other audio. I don't know what audio this is. I think uh, the PAO left his mic on without... Uh, for the general room instead of the the air to ground loop. Hey, uh, Houston and Intrepid. Intrepid, Houston, go ahead. We're having a little trouble judging distance. How long's my shadow? Intrepid, your shadow length on a level surface is uh, 250 feet. That's the shadow of the limb on the surface of the ground. Because they know the sun angle, they can calculate that. The sun is at a very low angle, so it casts long shadows. They did that deliberately so that they could see the craters easier. So he's using that to judge distances out the window. Now, if you remember Apollo 11, they had no real idea of where they landed, and Michael Collins had trouble Houston, spotting them. A bit to this is uh, a which way do you think you are? huge improvement. <laughs> okay, uh, well, okay, we're approaching Venice. Feet long, we're really misjudging distances. Roger, Pete, are you short or long? Well, I, I'd say that my shadow was much shorter than that. Roger. We're going to turn towards Padova and then approach Venice because we need time to descend Let here. Go ahead. Let me see, does this have... Yes, it does have an air brake. Around the belly there. That's affirmative. That's for later. I'll need that right now. Well, okay, maybe we do. Intrepid, Houston. Go ahead. A reminder, prior to your P-22, uh, I'd like you to execute verb 41, noun 72. Okay, go on verb 41, noun 72. Venice would be on our right, but we've got a lot of clouds here. The scenery for Venice I imported from Flight Sim, because I had a previous Flight Sim package for Venice. And again, that I importation. Did you want me to do? Anyhow, I got it point uh, 270, 180. Uh, Roger, Pete. Uh, Roger, Pete. Uh, Importing like that only works well if the ground is level. And Stand by, Pete. fortunately, that is true of Venice. Intrepid Houston, uh, the step you carried out on surface 9 going to uh, 270, 180 is good. Understand.
Intrepid, Houston. Go. We'll shorten that shadow length up for you a bit. If we uh, assume a three and a half degree slope all the way, then you'll come up with a 150 foot shadow. Okay, then I'm judging about right. Uh, how wide a diameter is the uh, head of the snowman? Intrepid Houston, the diameter of the head crater from one inside rim to the other inside rim is around uh, 400 to 500 feet. Yeah, so I mean, the snowman is not very big, you can tell. Okay. Now, right off the head of the snowman, to the left, uh, let's use map uh, 7-6. At uh, coordinate M5 and make it uh, 10.5. I think that's a very sharp Washington crater. Do you agree? Copy uh, M5 10-5. You can sort of again overview of the general area of the Venetian Lagoon, which is what we're seeing to our right there. We're still aimed at Padua. Intrepid Houston, uh, the coordinates which you gave us, are those the coordinates of the crater or the coordinates of your present location? And also, uh, repeat your question uh, related to the blocking rim. Well, I want to know if that crater uh, that I gave you, that's not where I am. I, want, I have a crater, I think I have that crater in sight. And it's a very blocky rim crater, and I, if I want to know if the crater that I gave you the coordinates of is a very blocky rim crater. I think I'm sitting right next to the head of the snowman on the right hand side at coordinates S, uh, wait a month. Yeah, S.8 and 13.3. I think that's where I landed. Copy S8 and 13.3. Uh, the coordinates you gave us of the crater are uh, right next to Bench Crater. Uh, do you confirm? Bench Crater being uh, at L5 rather than uh, M5. Okay, I'm going to get on this uh, P22. Hold the phone. I think it's trying to load some of the Venice area scenery right now. Let's try it at uh, better quality. We're probably going to face some harsh right, frame rates. Roger, Intrepid. Intrepid, Houston, Intrepid, Houston, Intrepid, Houston, Intrepid. So again, the city up ahead is Padova, or Padova. here whether uh, your present position is really uh, R2 rather than uh, S8. To be honest, the uh, lagoon is so sort of complex, it's ex not exactly easy to see which island has an right, on right, it. R2. I'm sorry, I'm you could probably right, spot R2. it, but Roger, we'll just have to approach it. can see the Alps in the background. Houston, we're eating right now. We'll give you a description here in another 15 minutes or so. Roger, Intrepid, and we're standing by with the consumables update.
I'm getting acquisition B-22. Looks good. Roger. Nope, it doesn't like the rendering options. Okay. Well, this is Padua. This new estimate of the limb location would put it about 750 to 800 feet from the surveyor. Uh, uh, yeah, it really doesn't like what it hey, needs to do to the right. Has a visual on, uh, Yankee Clipper. Oh, they can see the CSM. So it looks like uh, this version of this plane is by Paolo Zamp on the xplane.org forums. I really should be more consistent about giving credit to the modeler for these things. Clipper, for your info, uh, Intrepid has a visual on you. Oh, I think we can see uh, where the buildings of Venisar in the lagoon now. Close to the horizon. This is Apollo Control at 112 hours 30 minutes. The change of shift. I guess until we actually approach, we'll. MSC news center. We'll take this line down now, and so that we won't get behind on live air to ground following the conference will turn any tapes over to the transcript during this news conference. This is Mission Control Houston. So we're skipping a chunk of time when they're having that conference. And since the air to ground is bound to be busy saying that the tapes will just have to end up on the transcript. They're not going to replay the tapes for our benefit. Apollo Control at 113 hours, 8 minutes. ERD to Commander 11018, DLM 04019. Roger, Intrepid. We're standing by live again. Both uh, Pete Conrad and Al Bean have been giving uh, descriptions of the what they can see from the limb windows in an attempt to help the geologists locate them. They're of the opinion that they'll uh, be able to do a better job of locating where they are after they get out and are able to look around in all directions. So on the shore the city is called Mestra. Now being reported the limb was sitting on what appeared to be an undulating plain, rolling country, as he said. Uh, there are no high objects, such as mountains or hills. They see a considerable number of blocky boulders. Out of the uh, directly ahead of them, seeing uh, traces perpendicular to the uh, lamb, traces in shallow trenches what he called traces in the surface. Things will be interesting to look at. Uh, I pointed out there's no contrast in colors. Everything appears to be pure white because of the sun angle. This is all the Laguna Venice. Uh, you can see the thin line of being said, the barrier islands like this place. all the way to so the right there. Pete suspect that there is lunar bedrock in the area. They suspect they can see some of the lunar bedrock. They also report uh, they believe there are good places to put the uh, 
experiment package, the all-sep. And Pete Conrad reported that he believes they're sitting right on the edge of a rather large crater, approximately 300 feet in diameter, with about a 10 degree slope. We'll continue to stand by. To our left is the airport we'll eventually land at, and that's Marco Polo Airport. I don't like this patchy sort of water so, yeah, texture they've got here. Cold has cleared up considerably. Have you, uh, can you give us the... Sounds as though your uh, stuffed head has cleared up considerably. Could you give us the uh, last uh, time in which you took the Actifed? Roger took the active bed uh, just before we put our helmets on, prior to DOI. I don't recall exactly what that time was. And uh, it started clearing up uh, along about TDI time, and I think being in this gravity field right here is helping it a bit. It allows it to drain. Uh, as I say, I'm rather cold, and it makes me feel a bit stuffy. Roger, Al, thank you. Okay, well, here we are. Nice thing about Venice is because it's so discreet. Okay, let me... I'll, I'll risk that so that the boat buildings don't pop in. The frame rate will be harsh, but it is what it is. But because Venice is so discreet, it's, you know, just a small area. Things can be modeled to a great detail if you really, really want to. And it looks like uh, they really, really wanted to. <laughs> so. Lots of custom buildings here. I just realized I've had my air break out the whole way which is fine sort of wanted that but this thing does seem to keep its velocity quite well I mean I'm only at maybe 30 percent throttle right now don't worry I'll come back around this island is Murano Somehow, I'm sure it's expensive. <laughs> uh. This is Apollo Control at 113 hours, 24 minutes. We're showing intrepid. That squarish island in the middle is San Michel. Per square inch, and temperature inside the cabin 63 degrees. on the verbal descriptions from Intrepid's crew, geologists, and the uh, mapping specialists uh, continue to believe now that that limb is on the northwest rim of the crater known as Head Crater. That's the crater just west of uh, Surveyor Crater. Surveyor Crater forms the body of the snowman. And this uh, crater is the head of the snowman. They believe it to them to be on the uh, northwest rim of the head crater. Never tracked to the speed break. I think we're slow enough.
I'm sure others can spot the details much better than I can. I suspect that some autogen is complicating matters. I don't know. I've already got Regit well, let's see. No, I mean some of these buildings are definitely autogen that's uh, being placed when it ought not to be. And ruining things. I don't know exactly. I haven't filled around with how that all works, so. Anyway, Venice as it is right now in this game, I mean, in my version, all my fiddling. Let's land. Probably this plane doesn't actually have a dial in knots, probably it's going to be kilometers per hour for, oh shoot. Uh, and the uh, cockpit seems to be a little bit weird. The crew of Intrepid hmm. is busy now with preparations for the EVA. It's not helpful. Plan to depressurize the cabin at an elapsed time of 114 hours, 20 minutes. It's now 113 hours, 45 minutes. That's the uh, break. Landing gear. Clipper, uh, we have a slight delay on uh, getting that state vector up to you. We're having a uh, break in. Little PM problem. We have a T22 pad for you when you're ready to copy. Ready to copy. T22, T1, 114, Readjusting the elevator trim. And Disregard those numbers in the flight plan. Flat minus three decimal zero oh, two nine. Zoomed out again. Shoot. Longitude over two. Minus one one decimal seven zero eight. Altitude minus one decimal one three. And on your map, LAM seven. I don't see markings on the runway, and I don't think I'm low, so those lights are suspicious. Might need to get some work on this runway. Okay, we have arrived at Marco Polo. I guess it's international. I don't know if this airport in Venice is the international one. Whoa, whoa, okay, 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 okay. I won't use brakes so much. Come on. Alright, that looks like a good taxiway. It's like doing in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, so we have arrived at Venice. And I'll pause the audio. And with this view of the Aramachi MB339, continuing to taxi, come on, continue, continue. 
I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.